Welcome to another video of theoretical genetics and so far we have discussed some common terms that are used in theoretical genetics and also a monohybrid cross. Now you know that genes usually have two alleles. So one gene is going to have two different forms which is known as an allele and usually there are two types of alleles. One of them is dominant. That means it has an effect on the phenotype even if it is homozygous or even if it is in the heterozygous condition. Similarly, the other allele is known as a recessive allele, which gives the effect only in the homozygous condition. We also did some information about codominance, which is a very rare but possible situation. It happens in case of a few examples, for example, in case of rose plant. So we are going to do something a little different from what we have learned. We are going to do something about multiple alleles in this video. So yes, there are some genes that are controlled by more than one allele. So we call them multiple alleles. So there are some genes that have more than two alleles for a given trait. The best example of this is the ABO blood group system. So this video is going to be pretty interesting because you will know how the blood groups of the parents, they affect the blood groups of their offspring. So the ABO blood group system of humans, as the name suggests, it is going to be affected by three different alleles. So there are three different cases or rather three different situations that can happen. One of them is they can share co-dominance. That means they will be expressed equally. They can share incomplete dominance. That means none of them completely expresses itself and that results in blending. And the third is they share a dominance order. For example, if A and B are present together, then A will dominate B. Or if allele B and C are present together, then B will dominate C. Or let's say if D and A are present together, D will always dominate A. So this is just one uh, example. But let's go ahead and study something more about the ABO blood groups. So when you assign alleles for codominance, the convention is to use a common letter to represent dominant and recessive and use superscripts to represent the different alleles. So in case of blood groups, we don't use the letter B or anything else. We use the letter I, where I stands for immunoglobulin. It is an antigenic protein on blood cells. So we use I for the representation. A and B are standing for the co-dominant variants. So that means there are three genes or three alleles of the same gene. You have IA, IB, and IO. A and B you need to remember for blood groups specifically. A and B are codominant. That means IA and IB are codominant. On the other hand, this one is the recessive elite. That means it will show its effect only in the homozygous condition. So what are the different combinations that you have? You can have a case like this or you can have a case like this or you can have a case such as this. Additionally, you may also have cases related to this recessively. That is this one and this one 
and this one. So a person who is homozygous for allele A is said to have the A blood group. A person who is homozygous for allele B is said to have the B blood group. A person who is heterozygous for A and B is said to have a B blood group. A person who is heterozygous for A and 0 which is recessive also has A blood group. A person who is heterozygous for B and the recessive allele is also the B blood group. And the person who does not have A or B but just the recessive allele is the O blood group. So let's see a little more. Let's explore these uh, details into in the form of a table. So, so let's create this little table of phenotype, genotype. It can donate blood to which kinds of blood groups and receive from which kinds of blood groups. So we basically have the first phenotype which is O and the genotype is this combination. We have the phenotype A which has two different kinds of genotypes. One is this one and the other one is this one. Then we have B blood group which has again two genotypes homozygous and heterozygous and lastly we have AB which has only one genotype which is co-dominance A and B both. Now let's take the example of blood group O which is the first one. Now this one can donate blood to blood group O obviously. Now these O do not have any problem, they do not create any problem for the other blood groups. So they do not interfere in the biological processes in any way. So that means O blood group can also donate to A, to B and to AB. And it can receive blood only from A. Why is that? Because let's suppose a person with this A blood group tries to give blood to a person with O blood group, the extra A is going to interfere. Similarly, the extra Bs can interfere from a B blood group person and from an AB blood group person, the A and B both will interfere. So it can receive blood only from O. Coming to the second blood group, which is A, it can donate blood to only A. And it can also donate blood to AB because obviously only A and the recessive allele are present. So they will not cause any interference for a person with AB blood group. But they can receive it from O and they can receive it from A. So I hope this is clear because there is no uh, allele that will create any kind of interference in their blood. Similarly coming to the third one which is B blood group it can donate blood to blood group B and to blood group AB. Similarly it can receive from blood group O and B only because if it gets blood from let's say blood group A the A will interfere. If it gets blood from blood group AB the A will again interfere. So coming to the fourth one AB can donate blood only to AB. And it can receive blood only from O or from AB. So you can just take a while to understand this table in a little more detail and try to build this table on your own as well. But I hope you'll be able to recognize two different trends. In this column, AB figures in everything. That means all of these blood groups can give blood to AB. That means AB can take blood from any blood group. That is why AB blood group is known as the universal recipient. Because each of these blood groups can give blood to AB. And in this column you will see O blood group is present everywhere. That means all the phenotypes can get blood from blood group O. Or in other words, O can donate blood to everyone. So O is known as the universal 
donor. So this is not a very tricky concept, but yes, if you understand it once, then it will be easy. Otherwise, you might be confused. So you can go through this video once again and try to build this table on your own. It will be really good for understanding. And that is all that I'm going to cover in this video. Thank you so much for watching the video. And don't forget to visit the website to like and share us at Facebook and to mail us your suggestions and feedback. So thank you so much for watching this video.